many blessings once again. Uh, he sure is merciful. He's merciful to us. I, and I'm I'm one of them fellers. I I believe as long as there's life there, there's hope. And I'm this. That's just the type of feller I am. If there's life in you, there's hope for you. Yes. And I believe that. And and I, I, I I've always been a person that fool with uh, animals and livestock. And uh, God knows that. Uh, the thing, the ones he's put me over, as long as there's any sign of life in an animal, I don't give up on him. I just don't give up. I keep a giving him medicine. I keep a holding him up and pouring stuff down him. And, but as long as there's life inside of him, I never forget this. Uh, went up there one morning. It was cold. Seemed like a wire had frost away big. It looked like it was great big because it was so cold. And I had a little goat. And she had two babies. And she hadn't even got up from laying down having them. And uh, one of them, I, uh, I just picked it up and sailed it down over through the woods. And, and then when I went to pick it up, I seen its little mouth just kind of moved just a little bit. And I grabbed that thing up and and took him to the house just as fast as I could. And it's uh, one morning early before we went to work, and I told Don, I said, uh, Get you get you something warm and rub this little fella just as much as you can rub him. I said, I'm going to go get me some warm milk. And I went back up there and I took a little old syringe, about about a 10 or 12 cc syringe, and I held the end of it and I milked milk down in there and put the stopper back in it. And here I went and went down there and just any way you laid it, if it wasn't supported, it just, it just limped down. Yeah. And I held its little head up and and had a little tube that I put on the end of that syringe and stuck down in his little belly. And I eased that milk in there just as easy as I could. And I said, now you keep right on rubbing it. And she was just throwing one towel in the, in the dryer to get it hot. And then she was wrapping him up and messing with him. And I went back and got me another syringe. And I come back and I put it in. And I said, now you keep messing with him. I said, uh, I said I gotta go to work. And I just did got to work down at Rogers. It was about 8 o'clock, and she called me. She said, this little lamb is running everywhere. <laughs> and he said, that it, it just a ball in this little head off. And I came in that afternoon, took it back and gave it to his mommy. And, you know, and when I when I seen there was life in that and, and I gave him milk, I, I told you wrong. I said I went back and got another tube. I didn't. Uh, the next trip back, I went down over the hill to the woods to see if his life still in the one I threw away. Yeah. And uh, and I went down there and he wasn't. He was he was dead. He was the first and born. He was dead. And uh, but as long as there's life in something, there's hope for it. There's hope. There's hope. Remember that's a good. Yeah. You said a lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for the goat. Yeah. Well, you, you had to tell me plain, Clyde. <laughs> that, that, that was, you said that lamb. Yeah, lamb. It, it was a goat. I call little lambs. I don't call them kids. I call them goats. I, I mean, I call them lambs, yeah. But it was a, it was a little baby goat, and, and I call them lambs. But uh, they're, they're called kids is what the right name for them is, is a little kid, K-I-D, that is. But anyhow, uh, if you would, turn with me to the book of Galatians. And uh, I don't know, I've been two or three places, had things on my heart this morning about, uh, it seemed like I changed my mind or something on them. But uh, I was uh, a reading, you know, in the Bible, and so many times... Uh, well, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit. I see so many people in my line of work. I mean, uh, me and Jason was talking one day we was together, and, and he said, you know, sometimes I feel almost like a hermit. Well, I'm around a lot of people, a lot of different people. And, uh, and I talk to a lot of people about, about the Lord. But it seems like that just about anybody and everybody that you talk to seem like they know something about Jesus. Yeah. They 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 seem to want to say, yeah, I, I'm I know. Him. Right. I know. Him. And uh, you know, uh, 
I believe that if you live for God and love him, it's just like I said, I believe you'll keep his commandments. And I believe when you read his precious word and you're found guilty in our, of not keeping his commandment or breaking some of the things that he says you ought to be doing, I feel like the Holy Ghost will convict you. I feel like it will talk to you and it will tell you, and it just it will just in plain English, just like Brandon was saying, I believe it'll tell you you're wrong. Oh yeah. I don't believe he's ashamed to tell you you're guilty. And I believe that when you're found guilty, if you live for God and love him, I believe when you're found guilty, you want to do something about it. I think you want to do something. About it. I believe you want to change that. All right. And but there is so many people that lives in this world. And in this universe that thinks that maybe they come to a tank meeting one time right here and they were six or seven, five years old, six, seven, ten, fourteen, eleven or whatever. Yeah. And, the, and, and the emotions was high and they got down and they cried and they made a confession. But they never did, there never was a change made in their heart and life. They wanted to do good for a little while when they left here and got out of this environment. Right, Lord. But, but you know, uh, if, if, if I lived here continually in this church and in this environment, even if I was lost, I'd still be, I'd think about God about it all the time because that's all y'all talk about. That's right. That's all we talk about. You know? Right, yeah, right. But God wants us to be a Christian when we're out of this environment. He wants us to be a Christian. And so many people, they say, yeah, I know the Lord. Jason, this, uh, this maybe last Sunday was talking about getting his hair cut, talking to this lady about the Lord. And, and you know, seemed like everything was just falling right in place. Until he found out that she was living in fornication, then the Word of God don't allow that. No, it don't. It don't allow that. That separates it. And the people that knows the Word of God, the people that, that has read the Word of God, they immediately, the Holy Ghost will speak to them and say, guilty. Mm -hmm. Does that make you a judge? No, it does not. Yeah. Makes you a judge of righteousness. Makes you, son. Makes you a ju judge of righteousness and what God expects out of you. But I have had so many of them to talk a good talk to me and be shacked up with a man. Be shacked up with a woman. Oh yeah. I have had so many of them to talk to me that would talk a good talk. Mm -hmm. Catch them in the store, buy them a case of beer. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't believe that way. No. That ain't the way I believe. It's not the Bible way. Yeah. But but still they think in their hearts that 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 they're good to go. They they feel like they're going to fly away. I feel like. That they've been deceived. Oh yeah, I feel like they're deceiving their own selves. But but you know in in Ephesians he says, "For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself; it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast." You wanna you wanna tell me how many times I've heard that out of people that's living wrong? They take that scripture. Well, it's not by works, right? It's not by works. You know, they want to take the word of God just like the devil did when he had Jesus up on the mountain attempting it. The devil wanted to take the word of God and use it on the word of God. That's right. And it won't work. It won't work. That's what that comforter is for, is to guide us and lead us in the truth and righteousness. And if we neglect that, like I told Brother all this morning, if we neglect that, then what we are doing is resisting the Holy Ghost. It even wrote about that. He said, why do you always resist the Holy Ghost as did your fathers? Yeah. You see, you can resist this thing. But, but they, use this, uh, they use this. Well, it is the grace of God. I, I could not have possibly made it to, to Jesus Christ and to the Father except for the goodness of God led me there. Amen. So it was the grace of God. It wasn't the works that I had done before uh, I met God. It wasn't because uh, when I, even before I met God, I didn't think it would kill people. Right. That's good. Even before I met God, I didn't think it was right to lie and steal and cheat. Right. I didn't go around naked even, even before I got saved. Amen. 
But I still, I know it wasn't nothing that I, it wasn't none of my goodness that right. ever got me there. That's what this is saying. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't nothing that you ever done that makes you worthy. <laughs> But it was the goodness of God Amen. that through believing in Jesus Christ, you got there. Now, uh, I want you to go to Galatians, if you would, in the book of Galatians. And these, uh, these people, these Galatian people, Paul was, uh, he was uh, re reproving them. And in chapter 2, and uh, I guess about... Uh, 13. But in it, let me just read. It said, And the other Jews disassembled like size with it, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Right. Now, see, that's talking about works again. But this is talking about works. This is what Paul was talking about. These Galatians, they got saved. They received the word of God. They believed in Jesus Christ. They received Christ into their hearts. But then they, then somebody come to them and preach to them that they ought to, they ought to be a fallen through the works of the law. If if you want to be a Christian, yeah, you, you ought to be a fallen the works of the law. And and Paul, when when Peter had went down there and eat with uh, Cornelius, I guess it was. But anyhow, when the Holy Ghost fell upon the Gentile people, when Peter was down there. Then he said, then has the word of God would come to the Gentile people. And, the, and, and Peter even said, well, God has no respect to person. Now not only the Jews, but the Gentiles. Right. They had the same chance as us, through belief. And, and he was doing away with works. But the Bible said when we was created into this thing, we was created unto good works through Jesus Christ. So you see, it's bound for us to do the good works, but the good works is not what saves us. And he went on to say, he said, knowing that a man is not just, he said, for by the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you see, I couldn't live by the law. Brandon here just a Wednesday night or, or a Wednesday night or two ago preached on the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. See, there was a curse in that thing because we couldn't fulfill it. We could not possibly fulfill that law. Yeah. And, and James, when he talks about faith without works is dead, James said in the law that if you was guilty of one point, you was guilty of all. And he said, you might can keep all of the commandments. You might can keep all of the law. Yeah. But be guilty in one little point. Right, Walter. And he said, that makes you a transgression. That makes you guilty. Yeah. So you see, there ain't no way in this world that we can be justified any other way but by Jesus Christ our Lord. And he went on, he said, but after we have justified, now you listen to this right here in, in 17. He said, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, yes. we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ a minister of sin? God forbid. Yeah. So you see, they want to tell you the world that's living in adultery, they're living shacked up with that with that woman, that whore. That whore is nothing in the world that, that, that it talks about. Everybody. It's talking about the world. They, 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 they're committing a fornication with the world. Yeah. They're committing adultery with the world, with that woman Word. that rides upon the beast. And, and, and they're saying, you're not just, you know, it's not by works. 
It's the grace of God. God give it to you. But I'm reading to you that Paul said to them that was under the law, them that said it was by works, he said, it ain't by works. He said, no man can keep these works. Yeah. No man can. You're justified through Jesus Christ. Now, now you've put on Christ. Created unto good, good works. Yeah. Now, do you take this uh, liberty that Christ has given you to be a sinner? No, sir. Do you take this liberty that Christ has given you to steal off of people, to lie and cheat, and do those things that's contrary to the Word of God? No, you do not. Because if you do these things, you, you know what he said? He said, if you build, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Yeah. Well, you go to James where it talks about faith and works. And, and he said that if you're guilty back there, you become a transgressor back there. He said, if you have respect one to another, then you're a transgressor. Bless you all. Now, if Jason knew that I was sitting right here and he knew that I was involved in something that wasn't right with Christ and he respected that situation and didn't say anything to me but then turned right around and scold Clyde for something he's doing then he's showing respect to person but see the word of God don't have no respect to person no, no. none whatsoever I mean, people, uh, they, they beat all I've ever seen. They, they think they can live like the devil and just go right on into heaven. They, th they think it makes no difference. You know, I made a confession when I was little, and the Bible said it wouldn't by your works. What are you bragging about? They want to make you think, if you're trying to live right, that you're working your way to heaven. That's right. They want to make you think that. That's why it's so important to dig in that word and know what it says yeah. that we won't get entangled with these situations that come up. Because that's the biggest thing that I see in this world right today is people that seem like the church is just coming closer and closer to just being eternal security. That, that everything's all right. That's right. I mean... I have them all the time, right out of them places. Well, I wish the Lord this take her. I wish the Lord this take him. He's been ready to go for years. Living like the devil. Yeah. Ready to fly away. I'll tell you what the Bible said. And then he told me not to gloat in that day. That it was going to be a dark and a gloomy day the day I met up with him. Who would I be to think that I was something to stand before God and pat my chest and say I've done something? Yeah. But God knows if you love him, if you keep his commandments. He does. And he said, well, you're talking this, is that talking this to the Jews? Is that talking to the Gentile? That's talking to the children of God. That's talking to the sons and daughters of God. Amen. When we, when we, when Christ comes and we accepted Christ, we become a son of God. Yeah. Well, see, back in Jesus' day, that was blasphemy. If, they, if, if the, the religious sect and the people out of the law, if they didn't hear me say I was the son of God, you know what they said? They'd have stoned me. Right, yeah. Just like they wanted to stone him. Mm -hmm. But when we become Christ, he wants us to separate ourselves from the world. Amen. He wants us to be a peculiar people. Yes. He wants us to be a people that salts after him, that seeks after him and lives after him and walks after him and breathes after him. I work a lot and it bothers me. It, it, it bothers me inside because I feel like sometimes that, that, that I neglect things that uh, between him. But when the sun rises in the morning, before my feet hits the ground, I'm a thinking of it. And when I'm arriving in my truck going to work, I'm thinking of it. I'm a praying for you, Jason, and you, and different ones, and the people that sick. He's, he's on my mind. He's in my heart. Yeah. 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 Amen. I'll be on the job, and the men be talking, and my mind will be thinking of him. Right. 
God wants a person. He wants somebody that, that speaks often of him. He wants somebody that, that, that speaks often of him. It, it, it's not ashamed of him. If the only time that you can ever talk about Christ is when you're in here with these Christian people, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And he went on and he said, for, it said, for I through the law am dead to the law. That I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law. Then Christ is dead in vain. So you see, if it had been any way in this world that that law could have created a, 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 a law that would have saved you, it would have been righteousness. Yeah. But they just couldn't do it. It just, it just wouldn't happen. And you see, and I'm going to go on here just in a minute. There was a promise made to Abraham 430 years before this law was ever pinned down. And that promise was... That in his in the seed in, in his seed was the promise, yeah. and you know that promise when Isaac come and stuff. But that promise, the Bible teaches us that seed wasn't Isaac. That seed was Christ. Yeah, that was the seed. I mean, and you go right on up here in Galatians, right here in chapter five, 4, he said, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Yeah. So you see, when the Jews, when Christ came, the Jews thought, because they always had been God's chosen, and they still are, but the Jews thought, Nobody else wouldn't allow in. But see, Jesus come to, to, to do away with that. Yeah. He come to bring it all into one. Okay. Into one. And back then, before Jesus came, and before all the plan of God come, Jesus, everybody that lived for God, and the children of God, the children of Israel, they were servants unto God. Right. Not sons and daughters, servants. But now it's talking about a servant and a, a son being an iron servant. He said one didn't differ no, no more than the other one did. Why? Because the promise was made to Abraham 430 years before this right here come and said that if we would believe in Jesus Christ and accept him in our heart and depart from iniquity, we could be sons and daughters of God. We'd be grafted into this body. Listen to what he said. He said, but is under governors and, and, and uh, the time appointed unto the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Yeah. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son, and to your hearts cried, Abba, Father, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. But a son. Thank you, Jesus. He he said, and if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. How, how be it then? When we knew not God, we did service unto them which by, by nature are not God. But now, after we have known God, or rather known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements where until you desire to be in bondage? Yeah. Now, he's a talking, he's a talking to them, going, wanting to go right back, going right back. To the Jewish fables and to the Jewish laws and to the, but I'm talking to you about going back to your old life. They was talking to them about going back under the law. I'm talking to you about going back under the the, the things of this world. And knowing better all over, being warned of God to know better, because I see so many things. People uh, come up to me and they're just ready to fly away. I'm going to tell you, young men and young women, you can't behave yourself. The Bible said it was better to marry than to burn. Now, now people think you can just go right on and do whatever you want to. That, these people that, that they can't stand their husband, 
but yet they're ready to fly away. They can't stand their wife, but yet they're ready to fly away. They don't, they don't want to do, they don't want to take care of their children. They neglect taking care of their children. And the Bible teaches me that if, it, if we won't provide for our own, we've denied the faith. That's right. There's faith in Jesus Christ. But it says if we if we won't take care of our own, we've denied the faith and become worse than an infidel. Why in this world would I think that God would let me buy with something that he won't let Matt buy with? He just wrote this right here plain as day. And it's for me and Jason and Matt and everybody. Everybody. That's right. Yeah. Divorces on every hand. You can't, you can't talk to people about God because they think divorces is just something to do. Do it. Do it. And I know they happen. I know they do. But God ain't pleased with them. Oh, well, I know. Yeah, that's a quiet tone right there. But Jesus is the one who said it. Right. He said it wasn't from the beginning. Right. He said them things that God had put together, let no man put a son. And I don't understand how. And 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 even even Bishop, I, I don't understand how Bishop could stand behind this pulpit right here and do with his wife and get another, and think he could just march right back in here and tell me how to live. I don't understand that. <clears throat> Do you understand it, Jason? I don't understand how somebody that lies like a devil can come and want to be an instructor to me. I don't understand somebody that won't take care of their little children right there and want to instruct me how to live. Yeah, right. I tell you, our instructions right here by the Word of God. This right here is our instructions. Nice. Right here. And the faith in Jesus Christ is, is, is only goodness that we'll ever have will be in Jesus Christ. Yes. All the righteousness that we'll ever have will be in Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, I'll tell you what, they'll, they'll look down on you for trying to live right. They sure will. They'll call you self-righteous. They'll call you a holy roller. They, they, all, they got all kinds of little funny names that they like to call people that wants to live right and go to heaven. They do. And, and you know what? The most of it ain't coming out of lost people. It's coming out of, well, it is coming out of lost people, but it's coming out of people that confess and that they know the of God. Now, if you want to get a hornet's nest stirred up, you get you you get your conversation going with them while they really really grounded in internal security, and you get your conversation going with them, and it's just like standing with a little switch and drop a hornet's nest and pecking outside of it. Mm -hmm. Won't be long, it'll come out. Yeah. Yeah. I've had them to point to a pine here just like a fat face. Nearly touch your head. They want to get just as close as they can. Stomp her feet. Yep. Slam my doors. Yep. Do all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he called me back. Said, my husband told me that I had to call and apologize to you for what I said. I don't want to apologize because of my husband. But I was right. I told her, I said, whether well, you're right or wrong, I said, then you'll never have another conversation about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I don't care who was right, who was wrong. I said, we won't have another one. All I asked her was Judas Iscariot ever want to want of Christ. I said, was Judas Iscariot, was he ever one of Christ's disciples? Why, she jumped that eye. That's all I asked her, Jason. Yeah. I thought she'd never shut up. On and on and on. They, some of them will nearly fight you over. Yeah. But I tell you, by the word of God, it's not right. Amen. Not right. By the word of God, it's not right. Amen. Amen. And I, I wouldn't teach my children that for nothing in this world. Once we're joined into this thing, and and and, and we we decide we can sin and do whatever we want to, then we're flustering the goodness of God. That's right. We're flustering the grace of God. We're we're we're, we're grieving the spirit of God in these things. That's right. Jesus will know that you love Him if you do what He says. If you keep His commandments, and He He didn't say I just spoke to the Jew. 
He said, what I speak to one, I speak to all. Right. His word is for every creature. And I'm going to tell you what, state. If people want to fuss all the time about the Jew and all the time about this and this is for this and this is for that and this is for that, I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. He said, I'm the door. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man can come to me except he come right through this door right here. And that right there is for the Jew and the Gentile. That's for the lost. That's for the saved. No. That's for the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the, the pretty, whatever. He said, I am the way. That's it. I am the way. There's one way. God made one way mm -hmm. to get to him. And that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. If we accept that, if we believe it with our hearts and accept it and live for him, we can die and go to heaven. He said we could. And I believe him with all my heart. But if it, it, these people, they want to fuss about religion, they want to fuss about the Jews and all that. If a Jew, if a Jew gets to heaven, he'll have to go through the door. He'll have to go through that door. He sure will. If you get to heaven, if I get to heaven, I'll have to go through that same door. Through the door. It's Jesus Christ. They, they were, nobody in this world found worthy except for Jesus Christ. Amen. He was good enough and God accepted him and he became the supreme sacrifice for our sins. Right. Not that we could freely sin or had liberty to sin, yeah. but it was for the sins that we had created, the sins that we couldn't do nothing about, the sins that I talked about two weeks ago, a, a bill that we could not pay. That's right. He died for them and made a way that, that, that through him and his goodness that I could come to him. And he didn't create me to go out and be back in the world. He created me unto good works. That's right. That I wouldn't grieve and frustrate the spirit of Christ. <coughs> and, if, and if we do these things, we're walking contrary. Yeah. And what we need to do if we are and we're brought to the light by the word of God. We need to come to God. That's right. And ask Him to heal us and help us that we wouldn't frustrate and grieve the Spirit of God. Amen. God does love us. He, he, he loves the, the worst sin in this world. He loves it. I don't know how. He, I, I can't explain so many things that's in this word. And His love is one of them. I can't explain it. Because when people does you in after so long, you kind of get tired of them, don't you? do. But not God. He, he's got that kind of love. I can't explain. I don't know how he took a, an old thing like me and grafted me in and created me into the a son of God. Right. I don't know how he done that. Yeah. I don't know why he done it. And put his good spirit inside of me, something that's just more precious than anything in this world. If you ask me put something, he put that inside of me. Amen. This is to talk to me when I'm by myself and to lead me in the right ways, in the paths of righteousness. Yes. For his name's sake. Yes. He's a good God, a holy God. Oh, he, he just wants us to do the things that's pleasing to him. Amen. I pray I pray every morning. I say, God, help me. Help me to do some things that's pleasing in your sight. I, I mean, I, I don't want to please Jace. I don't want to please Jeremy. I want to please God. That's right. I want to be pleasing in His sight. That when He looks down at home, I've tried to do something. I said, don't let me do these things that grieve your spirit. Don't let me be contrary and hard headed. That's our nature, you know, to want to do things that we ain't supposed to do. But God loves us. He wants us to go in the right way. I appreciate it. Amen. 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 Well, that was wonderful teaching, wasn't it?